There is a lot to be desired by this film, as this gives us a subtle glance into the reasonings behind the Haga and their festivities, but it also raises more questions in itself. We can understand that the Haga are more aligned with the sharing of things, even the raising of children, emotional outbursts, and celebration of death as it becomes new life. This idea of the cycle of life, or celebrating the highlights of the seasons by the sun, is not a new feat, but rather evolved throughout the ages by what it means to go through a painful journey to find an ending, whether it be happy or saddening one. This is two takes, and this is one shot, an analysis of the film Midsommar. Warning, spoilers might be ahead. There is an underlining current of the Ari Aster's breakup film to be a piece of work that can be interpreted in so many different ways. And what I feel is that that is the point. Even the name Midsommar is never defined on how it should be said out loud. And here we have so many people saying it the way they wish to see it, even me. With that in mind, let's just say there are many theories that can come out of this film many interpretations that can help or hinder what the viewer wants or wishes to see. We all know that Danny, the main protagonist, is predestined to be the May Queen because the tapestry is shown at the beginning of the film. It presents the noticeability of this, as well as the horror format of newcomers coming to celebrate a unique festival in a cult-like setting. It's obvious. People are going to die. And they do, which is fair enough, because we were told this at the beginning. But what is the reason behind this significant day in the Haga's history? Why every 90 years? And why Danny? Let's take a look. Just a quick side note and shout out to the patrons Oren and Bradley for choosing me and my podcast, enjoying what I've done and loving it so much that they simply want more. The Patreon I have features three extra shows, the chance to be part of the shows that are extra content, as in you can be a guest, bonus never before seen content from my one shot series, and of course, a special shout out as a thank you for following my journey. If you want to join in, then please visit my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash two takes podcast. I have many exciting plans in the future and with your support, I can make this come true. And with that, back to Midsommar. On this, the day of our deity of reciprocity, we gather to give thanks to our treasured son. As an offering for our father, we will today surrender nine human lives. As Haga takes, so Haga also gives. Thus, for every new blood sacrificed, we will dedicate one our own. That is, four new bloods, four from Haga, the one to be chosen by the queen, nine in all, to die and be reborn in the great cycle. The Haga talk about the deity of reciprocity, the taking and giving of things that is rendered as a belief system. And we see this in the beautiful sunlight of how things are shared, given and received with a happy delicateness and tenderness. And in reflection of Danny and Christian's relationship, this is a defining moment of the Haga presenting what they do not have, communication and the philosophy of reciprocating to each other in every way. There are defining moments like these where the Haga show many differences in their behaviour, but primarily in what would they believe in. If we look further, we can find that, even though it's only hinted at, they might also place their belief in god and goddesses a long time ago, and through its evolution has rendered their gods to be what they represent, rather than see them as real physical beings. Siv, the woman who the quote is taken from, talks about our treasured son, with the sun in the sky being the bearer of good weather and harvests, long days and prosperity. For eons, it seems, the sun has been important within our culture, defining moments in the year and moments in the day. And here, with the Haga, it is no different. If we were to determine the sun as important as a god, this wouldn't be wrong either. In many pagan religions throughout the globe, the sun has been seen as either male or female, with the moon always being its counterpart 
the purposes of this film, I will look at the Norse gods, with the sun being a goddess named Sol, and her brother, the moon, named Mani. To go one step further, the importance of the sun can also be reflected in the moon, and how a lunar calendar is based on the monthly cycles of the moon's phases, and in this instance, a lunar calendar can determine religious festivals and national holidays. Add that to the fact that the new moon appears highest in the sky in the summer solstice, to which Midsommar takes place, and we have a connection. Bringing the Norse gods into this, it becomes more relevant if you think of the part of the quote when she says, as an offering to our father. She might have meant Odin, the all-father of everyone, even Sol and Mani. And since the festivities of the Haga, especially the one that we see, is every 90 years, I wanted to dig a little deeper and found that there are many repetitive and significant occurrences linked to the number nine. Linking it with the gods, Odin, for instance, there's an old myth about the father of the Norse gods, who was hung upside down for nine days and nine nights in the Yggdrasil, the world tree, in order to bring knowledge to the world, also creating Futark, the runes language, which is featured within the film in regular intervals. The Yggdrasil, the world tree, known in Norse cosmology, links nine different worlds or realms, and much like in the series Vikings, where Ragnar and his gang go to Uppsala as a pilgrimage, there, nine humans are sacrificed every nine years, along with a variety of animals in sets of nine. This can link back to Midsommar and what the Haga do, evolving their belief system as an aspect of giving and receiving, rather than to appease the gods. They also sacrifice nine human lives, dividing it up between themselves, new blood, and the choice from their queen. Not convinced? There's more. The feast itself is celebrated every 90 years, 9 times 10, implying that each one of the sacrificed equals the 10 years of purity for the Haga people. There's also a scene where Pele explains to Danny that the Haga cycle of life is perceived by age and related to the seasons. 0 to 18 years old marks their springtime as childhood, 9 times 2. Youth ends at the age of 36, 9 times 4 making this the marking of a pilgrimage, much like Danny is going through, and the season of summer. The autumn would be signified at the age of 54, 9 times 6, marking maturity, with winter at the age of 72, 9 times 8, to which the Haga sees that as the end of the life cycle, much like the scene of two elderly Haga villagers willingly falling to their deaths. Even the name Midsommar has nine letters in it, the festivities happening as the new moon rises, the ninth phase in the lunar calendar before it starts again. There is a notion of starting again, of reincarnation perhaps, but most importantly about death and new life. Like the Haga celebrating a death, the sacrificed, and its rebirth for them, Danny also is in her own way. Many people know by now that Dani is going through her own pilgrimage, and that is a difficult burden to bear, emotionally. Being a breakup movie with folk horror can show a liberating take on your rebirth, the toxic ex being engulfed in flames. But I think it's more than that. I think Dani's journey is more personal, and that, linking it subtly to nine months of hormonal changes one can go through a pregnancy, we begin to see patterns. But remember, only some moments in the film can represent this theory, and all of them entirely concentrate on Danny and her emotional state. Pregnancy is based on three trimester periods that can define the growth of the baby within the womb. Don't take this theory literally at face value, because even though pregnancy is rejoiced as giving birth, giving life to someone new, in a darker way, it can also be taken away. Your body is changing, or changed, and it will never be the same, and you might have gone through emotional distress and discomfort, vulnerability, and in some cases, feeling trapped that you are no longer yourself, by yourself, anymore. The death of Danny's family could be presented as the first trimester. Danny is no longer protected or seen as a child within her family unit. 
she is alone and has to grow up extremely quickly. Like a new mother, realising she has to take care of herself because of the arrival of someone else. The second trimester could be meeting and observing the Haga, finding them fascinating within their happy community, almost decreasing or stalling the grief she has of losing her family. This is something else to look at, and it's attractive. The Haga are showing a family unit she has never had before, like something out of a fairy tale. But it's never that simple, as there are moments of emotional grief, hurt, longing, that come out eventually with the Haga there to witness and to help her. This painful stage of emotional distress could be the breaking point, much like contractions for labour. And the third trimester, the moving from one element to another, from the symptoms and the reliance of the old, Christian, to the new, Haga. Danny is not alone after all, with this new rebirth being like the end of the torturous labour to have someone to hold, and for them to be there with you through everything. She burns the old, and like her last name, Ardor, shown at the beginning, meaning flame in Latin, Dani was destined to be their queen, their phoenix coming out of the car exhaust ashes of her family to the sunlight. Our smile at the end, though through the choices that she was given, could personify many different emotions or even states of mind. And like the tapestry, her smile reflects the demented smile of the sun. I understand that some viewers state that, as the end of her sanity, that she has been manipulated and groomed in the, into this type of setting. But think further, if that was the case, why didn't they just kill her like the rest? She has empathy that goes farther than any of the people we observed around her. And unlike Christian and his friends, who find this emotional input to be off-putting or pointless, Danny is embraced and encouraged to show her true emotions, for it is their deity of giving and receiving. It doesn't always have to be anything physical, it can be emotional, intense in feeling. And Danny was deprived of that for so long that the Haga, like a rebirth, was like a breath of fresh air. It is through their truth and honesty that can be seen as liberating, even if it is also horrifying. But with every pilgrimage, with every journey, there will be horror, terror, but also release. And Danny got hers, almost like it was fated. And if you think about it, the outcome, like every other breakup, was inevitable. If you have enjoyed what was said, please follow me on Anchor, Spotify and other podcasting platforms to never miss an episode. Be kept in the loop for new content on my Instagram and Twitter page. For more on a visual appeal, I have introduced a YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed to read what was said, instead, Follow my blog, linked elsewhere. I'm a podcaster that enjoys this process, and it wouldn't have been made a reality without you, the listener. And so, I thank you for listening, and I hope you stick around for more. Mm-hmm.